Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, I tested a Blender app on an Android phone. Yes, the same Blender you know from desktop, but running on mobile. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what works, what doesn't, and whether it's worth trying. So, I found this Blender Android app somewhere on GitHub. I'm not exactly sure if it's official, but it looks and feels exactly like the desktop version. And surprisingly, it actually works. When you open it, you're greeted with the familiar interface, but there's a catch. You can't just move around the 3D space by swiping or pinching like other mobile animation apps. Instead, you'll have to use the control icons at the top of the screen. There's one for rotating, one for zooming in and out, and one for panning around. It works, but it's not comfortable at all, especially for long sessions. So I decided to make things easier. I got an OTG connector and plugged in a mouse, and honestly, that changed everything. Suddenly, it felt way more usable, way more natural. If you have a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse even better, just connect them and you're good to go. Now, the big question, can your phone handle Blender? Well, let's be real. Blender is a heavy application. You're not going to get smooth performance on just any phone. I recommend at least six gigabytes of RAM. In this video, I'm using a phone with 12 gigabytes of RAM and it's handling things quite well. But here's the shocker. I also tested it on a four gigabyte RAM phone and it still ran. Not as smoothly, of course, but it didn't crash instantly. So can you actually do real 3D work on a phone using Blender? I tested it. I followed a tutorial and modeled a low poly car right on my phone. And to my surprise, it worked really well. The modeling tools were responsive, modifiers like subdivision and mirror worked without issues. And overall, I enjoyed the process. It was smooth enough to feel productive. After modeling, I tested lighting, materials, and even rendering. Materials worked fine, lighting worked well too. But when it came to rendering, Eevee was a bit slow and laggy. I don't know why. But then I switched to cycles and surprisingly, it performed better than expected. It wasn't fast, but it got the job done. Again, your phone specs will play a huge role here. So don't expect miracles on lower end devices. I also explored the settings a bit and found that most of the core features are accessible. But here's the deal. Don't expect to run heavy simulations, complex geometry nodes or massive scenes. Blender on mobile is more like a lightweight version of the full thing. It's perfect for learning, practicing and modeling simple assets. But if you push it too far, your phone might freeze or crash. So be careful. So here's my final thought. If you have a good phone, a mouse, and maybe a Bluetooth keyboard, then yes, Blender on Android is usable. It's not going to replace your laptop or desktop, but it's an awesome way to learn and experiment on the go. Just keep your expectations realistic. If you're waiting to start learning 3D because you don't have a computer, this might be the perfect way to begin. No excuses, just get started. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with someone who's been thinking about jumping into 3D. Let me know in the comments if you've tried Blender on your phone or if you're planning to. I'll see you in the next one.